Is it love of one's birthplace, the place of childhood's recollections and hopes, dreams and aspirations? Patriotism, sir, is the last resort of scoundrels. Leo Tolstoy, the greatest anti-patriot of our times, defines patriotism as the principle that will justify the training of wholesale murderers. A trade that requires better equipment for the exercise of man-killing than the making of such necessities of life as shoes, clothing, and houses. A trade that guarantees better returns and greater glory than that of the average working man. Indeed, conceit, arrogance, and egotism are the essentials of patriotism. Let me il illustrate. Patriotism assumes that our globe is divided into little spots, each one surrounded by an iron gate. Those who have had the fortune of being born onto some particular spot consider themselves better, nobler, grander, more intelligent than the living beings inhabiting any other spot. It is, therefore, the duty of everyone living on that chosen spot to fight, kill, and die in the attempt to impose his superiority upon all the others. The inhabitants of all the other spots reason in like manner, of course, with the result that, from early infancy, the mind of the child is poisoned with the blood-curdling stories about the Germans, the French, the Italians, the Russians, etc. When the child has reached manhood, he is thoroughly saturated with the belief that he is chosen by the Lord himself to defend his country against attack or invasion of any foreigner. It is for that purpose that we are clamoring for a greater army, a navy, more battleships and ammunition. We Americans claim to be a peace-loving people. We hate bloodshed. We are opposed to violence. Yet we go into spasms of joy over the possibility of projecting dynamite bombs from flying machines upon helpless citizens. Our hearts swell with pride at the thought that America is becoming the most powerful nation on earth and that it will eventually plant her iron foot on the necks of all other nations. Such is the logic of patriotism. Thinking men and women the world over are beginning to realize that patriotism is too narrow and limited a conception to meet the necessities of our time. The centralization of power has brought into being an international feeling of solidarity among the oppressed nations of the world. A solidarity which represents a greater harmony of interest between the working men of America and his brothers abroad than between the American miner and his exploiting compatriot. A solidarity which fears not foreign invasion because it is bringing all the workers to the point when they will say to their masters, go and do your own killing. We have done it long enough for you.